Um, I wouldn't say, though, that I loved the injury of Kyrie just because it brought me back to a convo you and I have had several times, and that is we didn't want these playoffs to be affected by injuries. You know, I didn't want any team to have any type of built-in excuse as to why they weren't able to advance. This time of year, we want to see the very best on the court, and if you're able to beat the very best, kudos to you. You got to tip your hat to them. But that's the first thing that, that it reminded me of. The second thing it reminded me of is another topic that we brought up on the show right here, and that was can Steve Nash coach? And that's to your point of now is one superstar against one superstar. Because Steve Nash, from day one, I've been very critical of him even getting that job. I didn't think that he was ready for that job. You're telling me someone who didn't even sit as an assistant coach on a bench automatically now gets speed tracked to being the head coach of a juggernaut. Because let's, let's face it, that's what they are, a juggernaut. And even before Harden, they were favored to come out of the East. So Steve Nash landed in a dream job right away. I've been always very critical of it. And I've always said, this is the time of year that we're going to learn a lot about Steve Nash as a coach. It looks good in the regular season when you only got to worry about certain certain games on a schedule because ultimately your talent is going to win out most nights anyway, right? When you've got two all-stars and three all-stars on the court, most nights you're going to win. Now, in a series, when the other team knows everything you want to do, when it's when a team has been able to study specifically for you, now you got to show me that you can coach. And I got to tell you, Steve Nash can't coach. Until he shows me otherwise in the series, he is getting out coached by Coach Bud. Yesterday's game, Kyrie goes down. They're down four points with five minutes to go in the second in the second quarter. From that point on, they missed 10 threes. They turn the ball over eight times. It gets ugly. Milwaukee looks like they're going to run them out the gym, and then ultimately Milwaukee ends up blowing them out to win the game, right? But the number that stuck out the most to me was Kevin Durant finished the game with 25 shots yesterday. The next closest player on the team with shots was Kyrie with 11. Kyrie ain't even played a damn second half of the game. How Kyrie's still the second leader in shots attempted? Because Steve Nash didn't coach him. And then he, he almost says so himself at the end of the game where he said, yeah, we rely too much on KD. You think? All you did was put uh, KD at the top of the key and just run ISO the rest of the game, hoping that KD would bail you out. You got to coach better for me. You got to show me more than I'm just relying on my superstars, right? Like you said, it is one superstar versus one superstar. Milwaukee supporting cast is better right now, obviously. I wouldn't put Middleton that far down, as you mentioned. You talked about top 50 players in the league. He is closer to 20 to 30 range. I mean, he's a borderline all-star. Same thing with Drew Holiday. Both of those guys are borderline all-star player uh, caliber players. So they're in that range. But you, if you're Steve Nash, we heard all season about how great Joe Harris is supposed to be as a three-point shooter on his team. He hasn't played well. Everyone was raving about Blake Griffin last series. Where's Blake Griffin been the last two games, right? So you guys gave away, and when I say you guys, I mean the Nets. You gave away all that young talent you had. You gave away Levert. You gave away Allen. You gave all those guys away because you wanted to load up with the superstars. You got the superstars. Now Steve Nash got to show me he can coach his way out of this situation. I don't, I'm be honest, I don't think he can. I think the comments again that he made yesterday about KD, them being too reliant on KD, the fact that he's already whining about how physical PJ Tucker is playing defense, those things are red flags to me because you're worried about how physical PJ Tucker is playing defense. This is the playoffs. Is he supposed to stand to the side and let KD get any shot? Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real, Real Talk. Fans.